Hello everyone, this is Ross, and welcome to another episode of Fruit Talk, where we talk about all things fruits, vegetables, important announcements, uh, anything that interests me really involving fruit. And in this video, we're going to talk a lot about um, so a couple announcements to make, uh, a winter plan that I have for my figs, because things are getting really cold here in Pennsylvania very quickly, and also uh, my garden plan for next year. So let's get into it. Uh, the first thing I want to mention, first announcement I want to mention is that we're actually approaching the 200 video mark. So for 200 days, pretty close, pretty soon, we're going to have put out a video a day for 200 days in a row, which is insane. I, uh, I can't actually believe that at all. I, I never really set out the goal to do that, but it looks like it's happening. So really, really cool. Um, I was looking back at some older videos, and it's just... It's just amazing. Since May 15th, that's when we started putting out a video every single day. Um, second announcement is that my Instagram page here, you guys can obviously follow me here as well, but one of the posts I did on Instagram this week was about fertilizer. I picked up at Home Depot. They have a lot of clearance items right now. And these clearance items in the fertilizer and the garden section, um, they're so, so cheap, guys. Organic fertilizer, I was basically getting a pound of organic fertilizer for 20 cents, which is unheard of. Uh, this big bag right here, which is 27 pounds, normally goes for $22. I picked it up for $2. <laughs> All right. You can find, I've heard someone said that they actually found pallets of this fertilizer and they got an entire pallet of it for next to nothing. So what I did was this past weekend, I spread fertilizer everywhere, all this organic stuff, all over the yard, put it on every single bed, um, you know, and hopefully that stuff breaks down and a lot of that nutrient stays in the soil um, for the springtime. So anyway, really, really cool. You guys should go and definitely visit your local Home Depot. Um, even Walmart has been doing this in the past. Uh, I think Lowe's is maybe starting to think about it. I'm not sure, but... It really depends on your area and just how cold it is where you live. And if anyone's really doing any gardening at this point in the year. Um, next thing I want to talk about is, uh, you know, just how cold it's getting here in Pennsylvania. Um, it's really, really cold so soon. For Thanksgiving, this is the coldest Thanksgiving. I mean, I think in the last hundred years or something, they're saying it's really, really cold. Um, you know, people have been making the joke of like, oh, what happened to global warming? Well, this is what global warming does. I think there's a bit of a misunderstanding there. Part of what global warming does is that it makes the extremes more extreme. So even in the highs and in the lows, that uh, this is just becoming a worse phenomenon as time goes on. Um, certainly in the last five years that I've been gardening, I've definitely noticed things have gotten warmer since that I was a kid. Um, so anyway, uh, enough about that. What that means to me though, is that, you know, the fact that I'm gonna get to 17 degrees Fahrenheit, you know, if I go to the to uh, what, Thursday night or Friday morning, you'll see here on Weather Underground that we're gonna get to 17 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's really bad for the figs, guys. Um, I think I've heard people be able to, they're, they're okay at this temperature. Potted fig trees outside, it's really uh, tough to leave them outside when it's below 20. I think 20 is a good number that I've been telling you guys, but I know for a fact that they can handle a little bit below 20, but I'm not entirely sure how much lower they can go below 20, and 17 degrees really scares me, especially because um, a lot of them are still outside on the patio and this is so early this is even earlier than last year and last year around november 15th we had a frost that came in that really did some damage to a lot of people's uh, trees it was a really early hard frost that came in and damaged a lot of trees uh, a lot of people's trees got killed all the way down to the ground just because of this hard frost that came in so soon for people this I don't think is going to be a frost because you can see that the temperature is above the dew point, but 
I mean, there is, you know, still that potential. The even the wind is really low. Um, not sure what the cl the cloud covers zero, so you know, it could be a hard frost as well. Really not that good uh, for the for the wood or for the roots because the roots, you know, it's going to get below twenty, so it's not really that great. And I can't really spend the time. You know, tomorrow's Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. I can't really spend the time to um, get outside and get all these trees into where I need to get them. I just have too many things to do. So a lot of them are going to have to tough it out, and um, it just is what it is. And hopefully I can uh, – what I've done to kind of combat this is to, I put them all together. I've huddled them all up. Whatever's left in the patio, you know, all the frost-sensitive things, I've already put that in the greenhouse, already put that in storage. But the things that are – you know, fully hardened up, uh, don't necessarily need as much protection. Bundle them all up, put them against your house, and see if you can cover the, the roots or cover the trees with something, whether it's plastic, a tarp, blankets, you know, anything you can do to give them a little bit of extra heat. Um, I don't really know what else you can do. You can turn them on their side, you can build a structure, you can bury them, you know, you can heal them in the ground, you can do all kinds of things, I guess, but. You know, for, the, for me, having about, like, uh, I think I have, like, 40 of them out there, at least. 40, 15-gallon size pots that are really heavy to move, you know. Um, it's just, this is the best I can come up with. So I'm going to, again, like I said, put them against the wall, cover them. For the in-ground trees, um, you know, this is also going to be a big hit for the in-ground trees. And this is going to be something you're going to want to do. I would recommend covering them certainly before this big low comes in. Um, you know, hopefully at this point, your tree is dormant. Hopefully at this point, all the leaves are off. A lot of the moisture is no longer in the plant. You know, a lot of the sap has gone into the roots. This is a really great time to cover them. And hopefully a lot of people are watching this video because this is my big warning, you know, cover your in-ground trees. Myself, part of this whole experiment of me putting them in ground was to see if I could get them through the winter time. So I will not be protecting them, my in-ground trees. You know, they're going to be left on their own. Um, what I may consider doing tomorrow morning, and this is the extent of what I will do, I think, at this point, um, before it gets to, you know, Friday, uh, Friday morning, Thursday night, after Thanksgiving is over, I think what I'll do is I'll, uh, before that happens, I'm going to spray the trees with wilt-proof. And what that will do is hopefully when these trees go into that freeze-thaw cycle, we're going to do a separate video on the on the wilt proof and what that exactly does, but it really keeps in that moisture. So when these freeze-thaw cycles happen, it's certainly going to freeze. 17 degrees is really cold. I would imagine that the wood is going to constrict pretty, pretty uh, rapidly, and these trees are going to be put in a defensive posture by constricting. That kind of helps them out. And then when things warm up again, because we're going to get, it, by this weekend, we're going to be in the 50s. It's going to be rain. I mean, it's going to be, a, what a turnaround. And these trees are going to lose some moisture that way. Um, when that freeze-thaw cycle happens, they immediately lose some moisture. And over time, throughout the wintertime, if you get enough of these freeze-thaw cycles that happen, your tree just doesn't have any moisture left in it, and it's dead. Um, you know, I think that's really the biggest cause of death in my zone. And that's what I'm really aiming to experiment with this year with the wilt proof is not necessarily the cold killing them, but the fact that there's a lot of desiccation from either wind or these freeze, freeze thaw cycles that are drying the, the wood out. So that's the goal this year, guys, is to get that, that stuff on there. And it's, this is a big warning to all of you. Again, we're going to do a separate video on that topic. Um, another announcement I want to make is that, you know, I've been selling a lot of fig cuttings on FigBid. This is exactly where they're going to be um, listed. Down in the description, you have a link down there that will show you guys exactly what it is that um, you can go to this exact link here and see all the listings that are going to be put up. Tomorrow night, there will be even more listings put up on FigBid that will end on Sunday for auction. And then the following week, I probably, no promises, but either the following week or the week after, I will have the remainder of my cuttings 
put up on FigBit either for auction or for buying them outright. And uh, we will do that sale for about a month and that's really as long as it will go. So really only have a small period, a small window here. Um, there's not a whole lot of cuttings left because I've decided to root a lot of them. I am um, rooting about 150 so far. I may do up to 176. That's my limit this year. I'll sh I did a whole video, guys, on the closet right next to me. I upgraded the closet. Tons of bins for rooting. All kinds of things. Um, so I'm going to be doing a whole video on that, showing you guys all the rooting process. You know, all the things that I'm going to be rooting. Um, you know, showing you guys the upgrades to the closet. Um, you know, there's going to be all kinds of all kinds of cuttings to be sold, but it's really not going to be as much as I had thought there was going to be, or as much as you guys probably thought there was going to be. Historically, I'm not really a seller. I, I uh, have a YouTube channel, and I like to share my, my fig hobby with you guys. This is a hobby. This isn't necessarily a business, but recently I've been taking it more seriously, and I've even monetized my channel, you know, to get some ad revenue. Um, you know, I put out 200 videos a day for you guys, or 200 videos in a row for you guys. Um, you know, I'm also doing the, the whole merch thing where you not only have ad revenue, but you sell things as merchandise. You know, some people sell t-shirts on YouTube, some people sell this, some people sell that. I have some merchandise that is directly related to what it is I'm talking about in, in the figs, right? But this year, I'm not going to have nearly as much as... Um, as I would like to have. Um, I also want to mention one other thing that I'm doing this year is I am creating a, a Patreon page and I just created this and you guys can go on here and, and if you want to support me the same way that you could buy my merchandise you can come on here and support me the same way. Um, so far I only have one tier and I probably will only stick to one tier for those of you who know what Patreon is. It's kind of like a subscription service for me, providing you guys something extra, perhaps if you want to support my work in any way, you know, it's for a lot of different creative artists, including people who make YouTube videos. This is one avenue that people can make some money. You know, for people like you guys that are probably watching my video at this point in time, you know, it's probably been about 15 minutes to 20 minutes long now. You've been sat, sitting here watching me watch, you know, watching me, you know, talk. It's to me that means a lot and it also probably means that you guys are really a big fan of what I have to say and I'm a big fan of my channel and you probably watch a lot of my videos so you know I think five dollars a month is a lot for some people but for some people for the, the whole reason behind this is that if some of you guys are watching my videos seven days a week because I'm putting them out seven days a week I get seven views from you guys seven views a week I need a thousand views to make about 10 bucks, which is not a bad rate, uh, but I don't get that many views. I don't have nearly that much uh, of a subscriber count. So for someone to instead, maybe, um, you know, I can turn off some of that ad revenue, so, you know, sacrifice some of that ad revenue, and instead I could get $5 a month. That would totally be worth it to me. And for some of you, it may not necessarily be a whole you know, a big hole in your pocket. So, you know, I think that's all I'm going to say on this topic. Uh, I may mention it a couple more times in the future, but, you know, I don't really, this is not something I necessarily want to push and push. Um, it's just something I want to br briefly mention every so often. Um, you know, and the last thing I want to mention to you guys is my garden plan for next year. There's a lot of things that um, I want to grow next year. A lot of things I've realized you know, whether it's fruit trees that are perennials, shrubs, vines, you know, and even annuals in terms of vegetables, I have learned a lot about what works here, what's more difficult, and what is easier to grow. And I've really gotten this, for the most part, down with a lot of the, the annuals this year. Some things are going to be a bit more challenging than others, obviously, in the form of melons and cucumbers, things that really get hit with fusarium wilt that was that is certainly in my soil in different locations of my yard. Hopefully this particular bed does not have any fusarium wilt. Um, tomatoes do fantastic where I live. 
Um, you know, the peppers have been doing fantastic. I dug both of those up. So essentially what I'm doing here with this gardening plan, though, before I get into all the different things, I want to mention that this is accessible in my spreadsheet. And that's in the description of every video I've ever put out. My Patreon will be, you know, all the merchandise I'm going to sell on Figbit, all the cuttings, all the plants, you know, all that, including the spreadsheet here. A lot of information, even my social media, that's all usually in the description. And this is a great resource that I share with you guys. I don't have to share it with you, but but I do because I find it to be so, so useful. And I put a lot of things in here that you guys may ask me questions about, and I can just send you this link. Um, what I've done in the past is I create this little grid here. So this is the name of the bed. Here's a separate bed here, and this is the name of name of that bed and here's a here's another bed here so I've got three different beds that I'm growing different annual crops in this particular year um, and I've spaced them out in this grid by one square foot so each of these boxes represents one square foot and then that way you can measure out exactly how long your beds are how wide they are and then you can just plug in there the exact spacing you want that way you don't have to think about this when it when the time comes to actually plant this out. Uh, my garden plans are not necessarily done. You know, there's still a few gaps in here. I definitely want to grow a lot of this Aztec broccoli. This is something new that really is interesting to me. I'll probably post something on this throughout the week, and we may talk about more in detail on all of the garden plans and exactly what I'm growing and why I'm growing it in another video. But for this video, I, I kind of wanted to just, you know, let you guys know that this exists and this is what you should be doing and this is a really nice planning tool for you guys to use and it's accessible to you so anyway guys that is the video that's fruit talk i think we're on episode six or six seven or eight now so it's been a lot and i really enjoy these style of videos hopefully you guys do as well thank you guys so much for watching me and thank you so much for your support um i'll talk to you later take care